All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Bryson and I'm the International Recruitment and Admissions Counselor here at Western Kentucky University. And I'm coming to you live from campus right now for an installment of Live from the Hill. So if you haven't tuned in with us before for Live from the Hill, we've done all kinds of different episodes about different topics here at WKU. So different majors and programs. We've done one on campus life, living on campus, um, campus events. We've talked to different alumni. But today we are talking all about safety, uh, campus safety, um, which is obviously very, very important. In fact, WKU is ranked in uh, the top four safest campus communities in the entire U.S. by the National Safety Council. Um, so we take safety very, very seriously. We, we consider it our number one priority here at WKU. Um, but I also want to introduce with us um, a special guest we have today. We have Officer Tim Gray with the WKU Police Department. So Officer Gray, do you want to say hi? Absolutely. Good morning, everyone. Thank you guys for joining us. Happy to be here. All right. So we've got a few people watching from Facebook. Um, whether you're watching with us live or you're watching the recorded version, we really appreciate that you're here um, talking with us about safety today. I do want to encourage you, if you have any questions uh, for me or for Officer Gray, feel free to put those in the chat box, um, comment on Facebook. I would be glad to answer those for you. Um, so first off, I do want to distinguish, you know, we have our Bowling Green Police Department um, for the entire city of Bowling Green, but we also have a special WKU Police Department. Um, which Officer Gray is part of. So um, do you want to just talk a little bit about the WKU Police Department um, and, and talk about some of the services it provides? Sure. Um, so just as Bryson said, uh, we do have our very own uh, University Police Department. We have about 23 sworn officers right now. We've got about three new guys that are actually just starting to get back to the academy, of course, with COVID-19 and everything like that. So we'll be excited once we're able to get them out of the academy, get them through training and get them out patrolling our campus as well. So our main focus with us having a police department on campus, of course our main focus is the, any, the main campus and then anything that is university owned or controlled property. So that includes uh, the Ag Farm, uh, Lost River Cave, um, the Big Lot Shopping Center, whatnot. So that is all our immediate focus. Of course, now we are, with us being a state institution, we have statewide jurisdiction. Um, anytime we have you know, probable cause to, in, to conduct an investigation and go anywhere within the state of Kentucky. And then of course we have uh, countywide jurisdiction. So that gives us jurisdiction really all around the area. So you will see us, you will like Bryce said, you'll see Bowling Green City Police Department. We have the Warren County Sheriff's Department. And then we also have the Kentucky State Police. So you may see them in and about uh, the area as well. Um, we patrol around campus 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we're, we're always there. Somebody is always there patrolling. Uh, there's always somebody at dispatch. So you'll never call our dispatch call center and just kind of get a voicemail or anything like that. So you will always be able to reach somebody 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, our main office hours throughout the week, Monday through Friday, are typically 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And when we say main office hours, that's just for walk-in. So you're able to just walk into our police department if there's anything that we can do for you, if you need um, to file a report or to speak with an officer, speak with our chief, right? So you can do any of that between those main hours. After hours, we do have a phone that's located outside, just outside of our headquarters. So you can simply pick up that phone it'll immediately call you into dispatch and they will, uh, will be able to assist you, assist you from there. Um, so we are, um, one of the th things that we do offer um, as a police department and we kind of pride ourselves on and that's our campus safety escorts. And so that is a service that is, it's completely free of charge, doesn't cost you absolutely anything, but a few seconds of your time to just pick up the phone, give us a call, uh, and then just to wait for that office to get there. But we provide a, and we'd like to call it a walking escort. And we say that because we don't want students, faculty, or staff to ever feel like you have to get in a police car to go anywhere from point A to point B on our campus. But anytime you feel uncomfortable, we have a lot of students, uh, a lot of faculty, or staff members that may be either studying late at night or maybe uh, leaving their office late at night. And we just say, hey, my office is such and such place or my residence hall is in one location and my vehicle is in a completely other location. I don't have anybody to walk with me. Do you have somebody that can escort me to my vehicle? Absolutely, give us a call. Uh, that number is 
Uh, and we actually changed our number recently. So we wanted to make it easy for students to remember because there's a lot of 745 numbers that's out there. So we say, if you need the cops, call the cops, 745 cops right and that translates to 2677 but you just simply give us a call let us know that you like an escort where you are where you're going to and we'll be happy to come and meet with you and get you to where you're going safely awesome thanks so much officer gray um, so I do want to take this time too to just go over a few different uh, safety features and procedures uh, within the WKU campus um, so just to make sure that you're aware if you're watching, um, again, it's obviously very important that you're aware of these things. So um, the first we have our emergency towers um, throughout all of campus. So these little towers, uh, they're a few feet tall. They have a big blue light on the top of them, so you can see them very well at night. Um, and these towers have a button on them that automatically connects you with the police um, and they can be there literally within seconds. So should you ever feel that you are in any type of danger, um, you can press that and, and you'll know that they will be there. Um, and also these towers are positioned all through campus. So no matter where you are on campus, you should be able to see at least one. So one should be easily reachable. Um, and that's very important as well um, to know that, you know, literally the, the police are within arm's reach. Um, so that is really nice. Um, and then also, should you ever feel that you are not able to stop and press that button and connect with police. Um, if you actually will press a button on one of those towers and then walk to the next tower, uh, the police should actually be able to track you, um, which is another kind of big feature that we have. Again, you, you probably wouldn't have to use that feature, um, but again, it's there for your safety and your protection and you should feel a little safer knowing that uh, that, that feature is there. Um, another thing I want to talk about is safety within our residence halls. So if you are living on campus in one of our dorms, um, there are a lot of different safety precautions that we follow um, and that are there for you. So the first is your resident advisor. So on your hall, um, there will be a person who is an employee of WKU that will be living on that hall with you and they will be uh, your first point of contact within your residence hall. So if there's something wrong, um, you, you don't know if you really should call the police department or not, it might not be that serious, um, but you just want to say, hey, this is kind of weird. Um, your RA is there to let, to let them know about that situation, whether it's a roommate problem, maybe um, if some of your belongings go missing for any reason, um, they're there for you to help you in that, those situations. Um, but then also your residence hall um, advisor will be there for letting you know any kind of precautions that take place. So when you move into your hall, there will more than likely be a hall meeting uh, where they'll go over different procedures with you. Um, one of those procedures is a fire drill. So um, there, there are regularly scheduled fire drills on campus. Should there be any kind of fire in your residence hall? Um, just to make sure that you know where to go and, and how to get out safely um, should that occurrence arise. Uh, we usually do one of those in the middle of the night uh, at some point on campus, um, which, Thinking back to my experience at WKU, I always thought that was, you know, oh, it's the middle of the night, I have to get out for a fire drill. But um, think about it, if that's the only time where, you know, most of our students will be in the building. Um, so they're not, you know, going out to work, going to class and whatnot. So we do those in the middle of the night just to make sure most people are there um, and you know what to do during that situation should it ever arise. Um, another thing for residence hall safety um, is our check-in process to actually get into the residence hall. So basically, I'm gonna show you an example. Um, you will be given a student identification card if you're a student here at WKU. Um, here's an example, this is my staff ID, so it'll look a little similar to this right here. But if you live in a residence hall, uh, you'll have a certain type of sticker that will go on your student ID um, that matches that residence hall. So not every two residence halls on campus will have the same sticker, they'll all be separate. Um, but basically, there will be a resident advisor working the front desk at that residence hall. And basically, when you're walking by, you'll not only have to have a key to get into the building, but you'll have to flash your card to the residence advisor. Um, and basically, since they see that certain sticker on there, they know that you live in that residence hall. You're okay to go on into the building. Um, so if you don't have that sticker, you will not be permitted to go into the building um, unless you are checked in with a resident of that building. Um, so basically how that process works is if you have a guest, um, a friend coming to visit you uh, in your residence hall, you can have uh, that guest enter the building. Uh, they'll just have to leave their um, identification at the front desk with yours, um, just so we make sure that we know everyone who is in the building at all times. We don't want any uh, uninvited guests in the building, again, for your safety and protection. Um, 
Other, there will be a lot of other rules with your residence hall example. No alcohol, no drugs are permitted in the residence halls, um, things like that. Officer Gray, do you want to add anything about safety in residence halls? Yeah, just to, uh, I will just highlight, um, you know, our, our student staff uh, that work in the residence halls, they are phenomenal at, at what they do. And so there's always somebody at the front desk. And again, those desks are manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So there's always somebody down there at the front desk, whether you're coming in at one o'clock in the afternoon or one o'clock in the morning. So there's always somebody there to assist you. And those buildings also have hall directors. So they have individuals who supervise those student staff members that live in the buildings and that live up on your floors with you. And so just, just to iterate that they are a tremendous resource in terms of uh, individuals who, if they don't have the answer, they can help find it, right? And so uh, when, you know, when Bryson talks about that they're truly there, they're a part of your community, they're there to support you, absolutely encourage you to lean on them um, in, any, in any time that you need. One of the things that I will add uh, when it comes to, you know, safety, you know, in the residence halls, um, I know that it's, it, it can be, it's, it's, it's in our nature to, when we're going through the door, to hold the door open for somebody that's coming in behind us. Um, because again, we're just so used to do that. And that's just kind of that courtesy thing. You, whether you're going to the grocery store, or you're going to the mall, just holding that door open to somebody. But that ID, that identifies you. And so a lot of our residence halls have now even moved to um, ID scanners to where you can simply scan your ID to get you into the building. They've gone away from the keys and more and more buildings as the years go on will eventually get to the card access. But remember that that card is attached to you, which attaches you to that building. And you may not know everybody in your building. So until you become really familiar with faces um, or even names of individuals that, that's in your building, right? So we, we call that unapologetic accountability, right? So we're not gonna apologize for keeping you safe. And we don't want you guys to ever feel like you have to apologize for keeping yourself safe either, right? So just encourage your, your, your floor mates, encourage your resident, other fellow residents that live in the building. Hey, you know, use that ID, make sure that you've got your ID or make sure that they're using that key to key into the building. Because again, it's just as that process is designed to help keep you and everybody else in that building safe. Absolutely. So something uh, I also want to address, we get a lot of questions uh, from prospective students about um, any kind of natural disasters or weather um, concerns or anything like that. I will say occasionally there's a storm here and there um, and occasionally in the area there might be a small tornado. Um, so we have procedures for that as well, absolutely. Um, so within most of our buildings, there are certain portions where um, it's a tornado safe center where our, anyone in the building will go if should there um, a tornado be in the area. Um, again, those are not going to happen super often, uh, but those procedures are there as well. And they are, you know, usually the center of the building and the first floor, um, the most structurally sound portion of the building. Um, and there will be a, some sort of a drill with your RA uh, for that as well. And they'll go over those procedures too. Um, so I, I just wanted to address that. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about general safety in Bowling Green, but before I move on to that, uh, Officer Gray, do you have anything about campus safety that you would like to throw in? Um, I will add when it comes to one of the things that uh, Bryson mentioned, the emergency phones, which are a phenomenal tool. Um, I can't even begin to talk about how how, how phenomenal they are both for us and both for our faculty, students, and staff on campus. Um, one of the things that uh, with those emergency phones, we have closed circuit TV cameras all around campus. They're, they're everywhere, right? So we're just kind of in that time where Big Brother's out there. Uh, but again, that's not designed to keep an eye on you. That's designed to for campus safety. And so one of the things that happens is that when you activate that emergency phone, whatever camera is in the nearest vicinity of you, it automatically zooms and pans to your location. So we don't have to search for you. We don't have to try to figure out which emergency phone that you activated. Man, those cameras, they automatically do their thing, right? We don't even have to control them. And so that's how we're able, so when Bryce talks about, hey, if you don't feel comfortable staying at that emergency phone, keep moving. And if you get to another one, you can press that one as well. And if you don't feel comfortable staying there, keep moving and you can press the, ne the next one, right? That's how we're able to track your movements uh, when it comes to those emergency phones. One of the things you'll see when you're on campus, 
pay attention to how wide the sidewalks are. They're a lot wider than your normal sidewalks. And that's for a reason. So those sidewalks are designed to allow emergency vehicles, such as police cruisers, to get in and about around the campus quickly and safely, right? And so, of course, we also have a lot of students walking about. So that's also for that reason. But when we talk about we can be there in seconds, meaning that I can put my cruiser on the bottom of campus, right? So way down at the bottom of campus, down by Zacharias Hall, which is one of our last residence halls on campus. I can put my vehicle in the middle of campus and I can travel all the way up to the bell tower, which is right in the heart of campus, before I have to get off, kind of get on the main road, go around, and then I can get right back on campus, right? So when we talk about we can be there in a hurry, we can be there in a hurry. And so our philosophy is this, where our cruisers can't go, we also have bike patrol. So you'll see me out quite a bit. I love bike patrol. I'm, in fact, I hardly ever am in a cruiser. Like I just, no, I'd rather, you, if I given a choice, which I am often, you will find me on bike patrol. And that's for a reason, because we're about community policing. And so I much rather be on a bike where I can engage in conversation. I might roll up on you while you're at the bus stop waiting on the shuttle bus or something like that, or just engaging in a walk on a hill and I may walk with you, right? Because again, we want, I wanna to talk to you, I wanna to get to know you, and I want you to get to know me. So where our cruisers can't go, our bikes will go. And where our bikes can't go, our feet will go. So you'll see us out on foot patrol as well, right? Just walking around, milling about, Again, if you see us just kind of casually walking around, checking in, sitting down, having lunch with you, that means things are great, right? And then that's exactly where we want to be. So where the cruisers can't go, our bikes can go. Where our bikes can go, our feet can go. If our feet can't get there, that means we don't need to be there and neither do you, right? So be safe and just always be in a place, right, where you can keep yourself safe in those ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I do want to touch a little bit about um, safety in Bowling Green. So Bowling Green, Kentucky, for those of you whose students are from different areas and haven't been able to, to come to campus um, or to come to Bowling Green, is a relatively small city. I will say that crime um, is, you know, pretty minimal in, in comparison to, you know, quite large cities. Um, but it's just use your best judgment for, for safety there. So, um, you know, if you're walking alone at night, it's obviously always better to have someone with you, have a friend or buddy with you. Um, if you're in other parts of the city, um, also be protective of your personal belongings. So, um, you know, if you're at a coffee shop and you have to use the restroom, you know, it's best to you know, take your belongings with you and that kind of thing. But that's just, you know, general safety, not just in Bowling Green. Um, but the big thing I do want to recommend for Bowling Green safety is um, follow our communications through our international office. So both our social media, follow us on Instagram or Facebook, um, pay attention to your emails that we send you because within our international office, if there is any kind of major circumstance happening that you need to be aware of immediately, or um, if there's any certain scam going around for um, that are coming to students, maybe it's an email scam or something like that. Um, our office is very good about reaching out to our international students and making them aware of those things. So I would definitely say that that is something you need to be plugged into um, for sure. Um, anything else, Officer Gray, for, for just general Bowling Green safety? Yeah, I will, I will actually tag right along um, when Bryson talks about social media. So, um, and that's because that's a great point. So we are also on social media, not just because we're cool. I mean, we would like to think we're cool, but we're also on social media, but we're on social media for a reason. We put out a lot of information on social media and whether it's a crime prevention program that we are putting on or that we're gonna be participating in, um, but we also put out information about what may be going on in the area that could affect you, right? So again, we don't pretend, right? So we don't pretend that we live in a bubble that WKU students, you know, live in this complete bubble and not affected by any of anything else that's going around. We know that's not true. So we're not gonna paint that reality for you. We also know that not all of our students live on campus. Many of our students live off campus and they live in apartments that are adjacent to campus. So we like to keep you guys informed as much as possible. And so as Bryson just talked about, if there is an immediate type of threat, and when we talk about threat, initially we're thinking, oh man, what's, you know, it's somebody out there, but that threat could be weather, right? So it could be a tornado, it could be, could be a hurricane, right? It could be probably not a hurricane, but it could certainly be some type of, some type of imp inclement weather, right? Well, we'll we use our emergency alert notification system 
to make you guys aware of that. And so we've got emails that will be sent out. We also have text messages that will be sent out. So one of the things that you're able to do is that you can go on to our TopNet system and you can choose to sign up for emergency alert notification. Those notifications begin with the police department. So if you're ever kind of wondering, okay, is this real or is this not real? Like what's going on? That begins and ends with us, right? So if, we're, if there is something that is, um, that may be uh, some type of danger that may be posing some type of threat to our campus community or the surrounding area, we're going to send that notification out. So we encourage you guys, if you're not following us already, I mean, for those of you who are already following us, that means go tops, right? But for those of you who are not following us, you can follow us on Twitter, which is at WKUPD. And then we're also on Instagram and Facebook, which is at WKU Police. And again, it's just simply designed. We put a lot of information out there to keep you guys aware because we know that's where our students are at um, already. So just be, be aware of that. And then again, as, as Bryson talked about, in just general campus safety or just general safety anywhere, um, know, your, know your surroundings. When you get to campus and you, and you find yourself meeting some friends, get familiar with the areas, right? So, you know, there's places where I'm just like, hey, I'm not familiar with this area, so I'm probably not going to hang out that in that area a lot, right? So just kind of get to know those areas, know your surroundings, get to know those local streets. It will come very quickly. Bowling Green is just kind of a small city, uh, but there could be a lot going on at any given time, right? So just get to know that area, be familiar with it. And then I'll always say that there's powers in numbers, right? There's power in numbers. So if you're out gonna, going for a walk, you're going for a run, late night run, late night jog, late night walk, anything like that, always take a buddy. Always take a buddy. And if you can't take a buddy, let somebody know where you're going, right? So if you're saying, hey, I'm going to such and such location, I should be back in 20 minutes. If I'm not back in 25 minutes, right, then I need you to be concerned. So have that system set up with a buddy because, again, there's power in numbers and we take care of one another. For sure, for sure. Um, and, and something I do want to kind of uh, end on for now, and then I think we have a couple questions, um, is for um, COVID procedures. So obviously, that is a number one concern that we get. Um, oh, we get a lot of questions about that right now. Um, I will say that, you know, our students is, or our, our campus is opening up. Um, we are going to be on campus this semester uh, with a hybrid program, so partially in person, partially um, online. Some of our students are doing completely online. Um, but I do want to say that we're going to have a COVID webinar Q&A session uh, tomorrow um, to talk completely about the reopening procedure. Um, but just as kind of a, a brief summary, um, you know, masks are going to be um, required um, indoors, Social distancing is encouraged, if at all possible, um, to stay you know at least six feet away from different people. Um, there's a lot of different things as far as our dining facilities, um, how that's going to be set up differently. Um, but I would actually encourage you to tune into that tomorrow. So Officer Gray is actually going to be there um, from the police department. We're going to have housing involved. We're going to have higher administration involved um, to basically answer any questions that you have about reopening procedures and safety in regards to COVID-19. Um, because again, that's that's just a whole different thing. We're having a complete session completely devoted to that. Um, so I do have, like I said, a couple questions before we end here. Um, so Officer Gray, feel free to jump in on these. Um, so if I need to contact WKUPD, um, what's the best way to do that? You've talked on a few different outlets in, in doing so. Um, but as far as just the easiest way, what would you, and if it's, you know, a non-emergency, should you go on and hit the button on the emergency towers, uh, what would you recommend? Great question. So in the event that it's a non-emergency, you can just call us directly, and that's uh, area code 270-745-COPS, right? So 745-2677. Of course, if it is an emergency, dial 911. But here's one thing I will add. Anytime you're calling 911 from a landline phone on campus, that goes directly to us. If you're calling 911 from your cell phone, that goes directly to the Bowling Green City Police Department. Now, once they find out, hey, I'm either, you're either on campus or you're on WKU property, 
if you need an emergency service like an ambulance or the fire department or something like that, they're going to go ahead and send that out. But then they're going to transfer you to us, right? Because we, the chances are we can get there to you much faster than their officers can because they're out all over the city, right? So that's just one thing to keep in mind. And I always encourage students, the moment you get to campus, program my number into your phone. Save us under there, best cops in the world, best cops you'll ever meet, you know, whatever. I mean, I'm just throwing out some suggestions, right? Uh, but save us in your phone because then that way it's just, you can pull us up and it's easy to find us. And you don't have to think about that number off the top of your head. Perfect, perfect. Um, kind of a, a darker question, but it is actually one that we get relatively often. Um, what is protocol if there were ever a campus shooting or an active shooter or anything like that? Yeah, um, great question. And it used to be one of those really tough things to talk about, but it's one of those things that's just commonplace for us to discuss, um, as a, not only as an institution, but just as a, as a nation, right? Because again, um, we hope those incidents, an incident like that never happens on our institution. But in the event that it might, or in the event that it does, we got to stay prepared. And so one of the things that we do is that we spend a lot of time um, going to professors, going to classes, uh, going to faculty members, staff members, and students, student groups, and talking about our active shooter response and what that protocol looks like. So we promote a process that's called run, hide, fight. And you may have heard of it. You may, be, may even be familiar with it. Um, so going back to our emergency notification system, Again, that's gonna kick in and that's gonna kick in in a major way. So not only are those alert notifications gonna go out via those channels, via all of our social media channels, but we also have an outdoor warning system known as the CAL system. And so that is an outdoor, extremely loud speaker system that will it will do a couple things. One, it will send out a loud siren type horn kind of a sound uh, to let you know that, hey, there's something, something's going on. But not only that, it will also follow up with a notification message. And so that message will give you instructions um, that there is some type of intimate threat going on. We need you to seek shelter. Um, again, that could be weather related, but that could also be in the event that there's an active threat of violence going on as well. So you can, so you'll be listening to that. That is something you can hear regardless of where you're on campus at any time um, that's out there. For us, we're going to immediately spring into action, right? So um, our officers, we train, we train, and we train some more. Uh, we also do a lot of training with our local uh, law enforcement agencies. So in the event something like that is going to happen, one thing I can tell you is that you will see every alphabet in law, in law enforcement show up on our campus um, because we have that kind of partnership with our local law enforcement, our local authorities to say, hey, if anything ever is major going down on campus, they're going to be made aware of it and we're going to get all the help that we need on campus and we're going to be there in a hurry. Uh, lastly, I will say we have a no wait process, which simply means if there's an active threat going on, it doesn't matter if I'm in DSU eating some Chick-fil-A, right? If there's a threat that goes down in DSU right there, I'm responding to it, right? So we're, it's not a sit and wait, kind of wait for the cavalry to get there, and then we'll kind of formulate a process and go after it. Absolutely not. Our first and main priority is the protection of life and a protection of property. And our goal and my goal and my commitment to you guys is to do everything in my power to help make sure you go home safely every single night, even if that means having to put my life before yours. That was the oath I took. That was a commitment that I made. There's no hidden fees. You're not gonna see that show up on your top net bill or anything like that, right? That's just part of the oath that we made to help keeping you guys safe. So we're gonna be springing into action, but we're also gonna be communicating so that you all know what's going on, what do you need to do, and kind of what's the follow-up process after that. For more information on that, we've got some detailed, a lot of good detailed information on our website. That's wku.edu forward slash police. Please go there in your free time, check that out. Lots of information there um, for you to browse as well. Awesome, I actually, um, thank you for that. Officer Gray, actually, somebody said I have misty eyes after hearing that. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you for, for your service for that. Um, last question, um, someone asks, do students feel just generally safe? Um, and I'd like to chime in for that one just because as someone who has been a student at WKU and now as a staff member, 
um, I can say that I have never felt unsafe at WKU. And I think it's because all of these procedures are in place. Like I know that these emergency towers are within feet away. I know that the WKU police are within seconds if I need them. Um, there are all these different protocols. There are all these drills within my residence hall or anything like that. Um, and I can tell you that, you know, there have been several occasions where I've been walking alone on campus at night just because I needed to, you know, go print something at the um, print center for class. And it's, you know, it's late. I'm working on homework alone. Um, and I felt comfortable walking through campus completely by myself. And that's, um, I would say that is rare at a lot of different ports of the world, a lot of, a lot of different ports in the U.S. Um, in different cities. But at, at WKU, um, in general, I do think students feel um, that regard for safety, for sure. Awesome. Um, so I think that is about all the time we have. Um, we really appreciate, appreciate you all uh, listening, whether it's live or um, the recorded version. Again, I do want to encourage you all to tune in to our um, COVID regulations uh, webinar happening tomorrow. Again, Officer Gray will be there. Um, but you'll learn all about our reopening process for sure. But Officer Gray, thank you so much for being here. We really pre appreciate it. Thank you for your service and for keeping us safe. Absolutely. Um, we really appreciate you guys having me on this morning. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much.